So welcome everyone to this gathering. I know that you have come from busy schedules, but the very fact that you have taken time to be here says much about your commitment. And I thank you for being here. I would hope that these few days would be times of great consolation for you as you hear one another speak about your own efforts in helping to allow our children glimpse an alternative view of what our world might be like. I know that my own prayers are with you and those of my brothers and I know also that society expects much from what happens here. So go for it. think of a Catholic school, I think of a place where the whole school family, the teachers and the parents and the students and all the auxiliary staff, everyone is empowered and enabled to experience God the way Jesus experienced God. And by that I mean, what are the opportunities that you present your children with so that this might happen, that they might experience God differently. And when I speak about God, I'm not speaking about some amorphous, otherworldly entity. I'm speaking about that mystery that we call God that surrounds us in which we are immersed in life. I keep saying that this world is God's agenda. And what's happening in this world is what matters to God and what matters to God matters to us and so the more our children are aware of what's happening in this world that's what this is about and they can see that they are their brothers and sisters keeper and they have a responsibility towards one another and if our staff and our schools can give them that we've gone a big way into doing something different I think part of it will be how does a school show that it is tolerant? How does a school show that everyone is included? There's no exclusion in it. Because I think these two elements, tolerance and inclusion, in a world where we are suspicious of one another and suspicious of difference, that's a great alternative value to give children. Can we, even the way we relate with one another as staff, and therefore people in this, in this gathering, can we open our minds and our hearts so that everyone feels included? Can we create during these days here a safe space so that we can speak freely and truthfully and honestly and openly to one another. Children learn by example. If we have that in our hearts, our children will, be, have, will have something to imitate. And I think these are the two great values that our world needs today. And for Australian society, my God, isn't that what it's all about? We are so scared of the outsider. We are so scared of people who are different from us. And I think this is where our schools need to come in and say, this is what we stand for, tolerance, inclusion. Everyone is part of the family. Everyone eats at the same table. In India, we say the visitor is God. The visitor is God. And really, it's not very different from our whole Judaic Christian tradition. The person who comes from outside tells me things about myself that I never knew. And that's what God does. God tells me something about myself that I never knew. And God is constantly opening myself to the wonder of who I am. And the visitor does that, and the stranger does that. So when I see the stranger and I see something different, rather than be threatened, can I have that heart that can welcome it? Because it's telling me something about who the human is. 
God is the other. God is the other. The image I hold, I want to give the whole thing back. Presence. It's the ability to be in a place and to feel part of that place. Not to be scared of it, to feel part of that place. And when I'm part of the place, I'm not threatened by it. I'm able to accept what's going on, able to accept what's happening within myself too. Compassion comes out of realizing that the other is not a stranger, but the brother and sister I haven't yet met, and getting that relationship going. Everything's about relationships. Our whole life is about relationships. The planet is about relationships. And we're beginning to realize that more and more today. I would love us during these days to deepen that sense of relationship. Try and get to know the other people that are here. Don't just look upon this as an intellectual exercise that I have to go through. Try and enter into the spirit of what is happening. And I believe that if that happens, something will, will something deep will take place. What you're going to experience here is more important than anything else you're going to learn. What you're going to experience in your relationships with one another. I, I believe that there's something beautiful that can happen and in that way we become part of a whole network, a whole family, an Edmund Rice family. Edmund was a family man and that's the one great gift that he bestowed on his followers relationships. So take that with you and fly. Spend time in silence. You connect with your heart's desires. Spend time with well, if I'm thinking of something now, it might come from left wing really. It's what am I concerned about that might happen in our Edmund Rice schools? What might happen? Christianity is an alternative way of living life and we've got to always remember that, it's an alternative. But the great temptation to an alternative community, because it wants to feel accepted, the great temptation is to imitate the dominant culture. And our church does that. Our church has moved away from being an alternative to being mainstream. Constantine, God rest him, did that to us. And we have never let go of that. And religious people hold the alternative. And they meant to hold the alternative. But again, with religious people, also the temptation is to become part of the mainstream. So congregations want to be strong, independent, and so on. And the great temptation, therefore, for schools in the Edmund Rice tradition would be to take on the image of the public schools, to be better and bigger than the public schools, and to forget the alternative voice, which is what you are here about today. And always remember that once you forget that, and once you become mainstream, you've forgotten it. It's the lesson that comes to us throughout scripture. The prophets in the Old Testament came because kings came into being, Israel, said to Samuel, give us a king. And when Samuel goes to Yahweh, Yahweh says, it is not you they have rejected, it is me. They do not want my reign, which is an alternative reign, not to be like the great nations, but to be a special nation. They've rejected that and they want to be like the great nations. And they lost. And if you, as Edmund Rice schools, want to go the same way of being like the other public schools, better than them, bigger than them, stronger than them, you're going to lose. I'm not saying you don't have the same standards, but you have different values, and the values must dictate who you are. I assure you of my prayers, and I assure you of the good wishes and prayers of the Christian brothers as you undertake this. But know that God is with you if you hold God and keep this image and this vision as central to who you are. God bless you all.